Hi everybody, I'm Spike Brave and today I'm taking a look at the HUD in MechWarrior Online. I got a request to do a tutorial on the HUD so I will attempt to do that here. I will cover some things in detail and some things I'll point you to some other tutorials because they're subjects in and of themselves. First of all, let's start about talking about this HUD by starting at the very top. So you can see at the top there, there's a timer that's counting up. That only occurs when you're in the testing grounds like I am now. In most, or in, in every circumstance right now, what will happen is you get a 15 minute timer as long as the match lasts. It will start counting down from 15. Once 15 minutes has been counted down to all zeros up there, the match ends. And uh, as you start your matches, you'll see the different victory conditions and they'll have the timeout condition. That's usually um, whoever has more max left. On either side of that, you'll see a blue number and a red number. In Conquest and Assault, that is the number of mechs that have been killed by that team. So you're always blue. So if you've killed five mechs, that zero would be a five. If the enemy had killed six mechs, that zero would be a six. That's all there is to that. Now what, when that changes is if you're playing Conquest. In Conquest, it's a number from zero to 750. And that indicates the amount of resource points you have accumulated during that match. So it's different there. And as I said, 750, you went at 750. So once it gets 750, match over. So keep an eye on that when you are playing Conquest. Directly underneath that, and I can't simulate that here in the testing grounds, will be either two bars if you are playing in assault mode. And what those two bars indicate is the amount of time left to capture the base. So you'll have a blue bar and a red bar right underneath the numbers that indicate how far away your base from being captured. The bar is full, and as mechs stand on the base to capture it, that bar will start to decrease. Keep an eye on that if you're playing assault. And in Conquest, what you'll have is five little bars all the way across the top, and those indicate who owns the resource nodes. So uh, keep an eye on those. That's really invaluable, in my opinion, during Conquest. I have seen a lot of people ask where the enemy mechs are. You can actually see them on bases capping, so it's actually a good, good way to tell where that last guy is. If he's capping a base, you'll be able to see it up there. So keep an eye on those. That, those will let you know where the enemies are if they're capping, because it'll say right there, hey, they're on theta, and it's going down. On the left hand side there you see it says Alpha Lance, that's your Lance indicator, so whatever Lance you start out in. So it could say Alpha, Beta, or Charlie depending on where you start out, and then it lists all the players in that Lance. So you'll see the player name, and the testing grounds it doesn't show the name, it just says player, but if I were playing a match it would say Spike Brave, 100% D5. Well the 100% is how healthy I am. As they start taking damage, it decreases the amount of health I have so that number will go down so you can tell how badly beat up your teammates are or at least in your lance and where they're at so keep an eye on that too that'll tell you where people are if they need some help if you see somebody's going from like 100 to 80 to 60 you probably need some help and you can tell where he is so maybe you can run out there and help him so that's that portion of it now directly underneath the uh, timer there and down a little bit is the warning indicators. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to overheat my Mac and you'll see that warning pop up. So it'll take me just a second here as I overheat. Critical. So you see it says heat warning now. That's probably one of the more common ones you'll see. Another really common one is incoming missile. It means you've got missiles locked onto you and they're coming in. Another good one that you see, but not so often, is they start running out of bounds of a warning. Out of bounds. So I have eight seconds to get back in bounds at the time I started saying that. So that's where your warnings come up, and it'll tell you things like if you've received critical damage, your armor's been uh, penetrated in an area and you're uh, starting to take damage to your internal structure, you'll get one that says critical damage. If you have a clan targeting computer and it gets destroyed, it'll let you know, hey, your targeting computer's been destroyed. So that's one to keep an eye on. Uh, very important, a lot of warnings there. And uh, as you can hear, Betty will talk to you too, and she'll tell you what's going on. But uh, that's where your warnings come up. Now, right underneath that is that bar that's a compass. And the number there is the degrees off of uh, north that you are. So if I face all the way north it's zero and as I turn that number goes up all the way to 360 Oop, going a little faster myself there all the way to 360 so 
can come back a little bit. So 255 there. So if I go all the way to 360, back at north. Uh, I haven't seen that used a lot to uh, communicate with your teammates, but that's what it's there for. That's what it does. And you also get the indicator of where the enemies are. So you can see I've got that red diamond, and there's that commander right there. That's what it's picking up on. Then if I come forward a little bit, I'll be able to see a cicada here too. There we go. So you see you got those two diamonds. So it kind of lets you know where your enemies are a little bit if they're being detected. So that's something to be aware of. And let's talk about those two triangles. The upper triangle is indicative of where your torso is pointed, and the lower triangle is indicative of where your legs are pointed. So if I come out here and I face south, for the most part, my legs are pointed south. So as I start to move my torso away from there, now I've got my torso pointed west, that lets me know where my two uh, components are pointed. And if you want to see that, I'll hit F4 and pull out my third person drone so you can see there's my torso and my legs. And as I bring them together, now my torso and my legs are pointing the same way. So there's a little visual representation of that guy. So we'll go back in here. I'll talk a little bit more about third person view towards the end of the video. On the very right hand side there you'll see it says slot 1, slot 2. Those are your consumable slots. Uh, you'll have a little icon there that tells you what consumables you have equipped. I have an artillery strike and that's denoted by that thing that looks kind of like a tank. If you had an airstrike it would look like an airplane. And the other thing I have is a cool shot consumable. And that helps me uh, manage my heat. If I'm getting real hot, I can pop off my cool shot and remove a bunch of heat from my gun. So those two indicate your consumables and the state they're in. So if I were to use one of my consumables, and I will use my artillery strike here, we'll uh, put smoke on my commando. Target acquired. Artillery strike activated. So you can see there's my smoke. My artillery strike's being used, so it's grayed out. And that is how the consumables work and how they're denoted on your HUD. If you have a mech with ECM, right above that will be a symbol that looks like a blue eye. That indicates that you have ECM on you. You'll see that all the time if you have ECM on your mech. If you're under friendly ECM, you'll also see that symbol. If you have ECM equipped and that symbol turns into the word ECM with a big red X over it, that means your ECM is being jammed by something. So look for a UAV, a mech with a Beagle Active Probe, or an Active Probe if it's planned, or uh, you're being tagged, narked, but something's casting your ECM, so be aware of that. Keep an eye on that. Hey, there's something up with your ECM. The other thing that you'll see there is something that looks like a low cell phone signal. It's three bars, only one of them is filled in. What that means is you're in the presence of enemy ECM. A lot of people have ECM and they're able to sneak up on other players who are not paying attention to their HUD. Several things will happen to your HUD when you're under the effect of an enemy ECM. And I can't stress how important it is to pay attention for these things. So, here we go. You'll get the cell phone bar looking thing. Hey, you're being affected by ECM. Something else that will happen is if you're facing Max. That red triangle there, or blue triangles if they are friendlies, and we'll talk about those in just a little bit, they'll start to flicker, and the last thing you'll see is on your mini map in the bottom center there, it'll say low signal. Those are all indicators, and they all occur all at the same time, that you're under the effect of enemy ECM. That means there's a mech with ECM, and it's an enemy, and it's close to you, so keep an eye out for that. I can't stress how important that it is. You start seeing those things, be aware of them, because it means that someone's close to you and they have ECM. So that means that there's at least one mech and you may have buddies. So be aware of that. You start seeing that, pay attention to it. So that's that portion of the uh, HUD. Let's talk about those triangles now. So as you can see, that commando has a red triangle over it. That's telling me that's an enemy mech who is not targeted at all. If he were to be targeted by a friendly unit, that triangle would be filled in. If I target him, it changes my HUD just a little bit more. So I'll hit R to target him. Target acquired. See the triangle's filled in because he's being targeted by a friendly unit. In this case, the friendly unit happens to be me, but I know it's me because he's got that box around it, and that lets me know who I'm targeting. If I had missile systems as I move over him, or missile systems that lock on, so LRMs or streaks, I would get a circle around my uh, reticle that would tell me, hey, you've got a lock on this mech. There's also a tone that goes with that, so that's how that works. I plan on doing a more in-depth tutorial on how to target in the future, but here's a here's a brief look at how that works, and if you're curious about how the weapons work, 
I do have a whole bunch of tutorials on all the weapons. So check those out. Every single weapon in the game, I'll show you how to use it. So uh, check those out. It's under weapon tests on my uh, YouTube page. So check those out if you need more information about the weapons. But that is how that works. Now directly around my targeting reticle, oh, and something else that's important to know about your uh, targeting reticle is we have arms and uh, torso targeting reticle. So my medium lasers are mounted in my arms, and that's the circle. So if I point all the way up in the air, you can see that circle's up there. So if I shoot my medium lasers all the way up there, that one that looks like a plus is one of my torso mounted weapons, and I have SRMs in my torso. So what I'll do is try to get somewhere where I can uh, show you that a little bit better. We'll go right here. And what I'll do is I'll aim up a little bit. Now what I'm trying to show you here is how those reticules work. So that circle is my arms where my medium lasers are and it's pointed at that tree on top of the hill here. My uh, torso weapons are pointed about halfway up the hill there so I'll fire my lasers. There's my lasers go and then we'll fire the missiles. There's the missiles go. They don't go quite in a tight grouping of like the lasers and direct fire weapons do. But those are how those two reticules work. Now something else to keep in mind is that we've got six little boxes around that target reticule. And those are in line with your weapon screws. So as you can see on the bottom right hand corner, that's where your weapon are uh, displayed to you. And they have six um, targeting groups they can be in. So I've got my medium lasers on my one, which is bound to my mouse left click key, and number two, which is bound to my mouse right click. So as I fire my lasers, what you'll see is that box with the line over it is your first group, and that's how it starts counting. So if I go and press that, see that box turns red until they're ready to fire again. And I'm ready to fire again, so that's a good visual indicator there. So same thing, go down one, that's group two. The SRM 4s, they're reloading, they're not ready to fire. Now they are. Turned red again. So that's a good indicator of where your weapon groups are ready. And then the one underneath 2 is 3. And then starting over on the right hand side at the top, 4, 5, 6. So that's how those are work, work out for you and give you some information on that and how that works. Now, directly underneath your targeting stuff is a place where you'll get information about what's going on in the match as far as your performance. So if you shoot down an enemy UAV, get a spotting assist, anything like that, you'll see little numbers go across the bottom telling you, hey, you got a spotting assist, it's worth 25 C-bills and 100 XP. I don't know that off the top of my head, it's just an example. But yep, kill assist, uh, narc assist, anything like that, you'll see that come across the bottom right above your mini-map. If you have the modern view mode enabled, you have the classic view mode enabled right underneath where it says Alpha Lance, that's where those messages will come up. Also, in that place underneath the Alpha Lance, you'll see if you've killed somebody, it'll say, um, it, let's say I kill uh, another player, it'll say Spike Brave has killed other pilot. And then that's also where chat appears. Can't do chat in uh, the testing grounds, but if you were chatting, all the chat would appear right underneath where your lance indicator or your lance information box is. So that's where that is. Now, let's talk about the stuff that's on the bottom. Talked a little bit about our weapons group. So on the bottom there, every weapon, on the bottom right hand side, as I think I said last time, that was a mistake. On the right hand side there, it lists all your weapons. So two medium lasers, two SRM4s. They'll all be listed there. Anything that's attached to the portion of it that, with the circle, lets me know it's arm mounted. Anything that's attached to the portion with the plus, torso mounted. And then, of course, the weapon which we discussed. So, group one, two medium lasers. They're lit up with ones. So that, that'll tell you where all that stuff is. And you can uh, set up the same weapons on different groups. So let's say I wanted a group that was a medium laser and an SRM4. So let's set that up in group three. So what I'll do is I'll press my right and left arrow keys to move what row is highlighted. So I'm using the right and left arrow keys to do that. And then up and down indicates which row you're on. So let's go back up to the medium laser and we'll hit the right control key, group 3, and then we'll go down to the first SRM4. And then we'll hit the right control key. So now those are in group 3. So if I engage the key that I have bound to weapon group 3, which happens to be my 
number three button on my keyboard and press that, I'll fire one medium laser and one laser on four. Now, as you can see, my uh, indicator showed around my reticule there of the boxes showed that uh, half the box filled up to indicate that I had fired everything in group one, but group three filled all the way up. So that will let you know a little bit about how your weapons are performing by looking in the center there and another example of how these boxes work. Okay, let's go to the center there. In the center is the battle grid. I have a tutorial on the battle grid. Check that out if you want more information, but pretty much it's a little mini map. It shows the enemy commando there because I'm detecting him and where I am. The line coming straight out is where my feet are pointed. And that uh, those two lines coming off in an arc let me know where I'm looking with my torso. Um, there's way more you can do with this. Please check out my tutorial on that if you'd like to know more. But that's the battle grid in a nutshell. Right on the right side, there's that blue bar. You'll only see that if you have a cool shot equipped, and I'll let you know how much cool shot you have left. So you'll see the cool shots for me in things like 3x3, 6x6, and 9x9, I believe. I don't use them very often, so I'm not 100% sure on the exact numbers on them. But it just gives you more uses for the consumable. So if I were to use my cool shot, um, the consumable will be used up and that bar would go down. So let's use that real quick. And uh, what I'll do is I'll get a little heat going too. And that's that other bar right next to it, that number that's at 20 or 30 right now. And if I engage my cool shot now, see how fast that goes down. See the blue bar went away, I'm all out of cool shot, consumable in slot 2 is empty. And that you'll only have that bar available if you have cool shot for cool shot on specifically for this tutorial, so I can show you how cool shot worked and how it listed on your HUD there. And then right next to that is your heat indicator. As you fire weapons or move, you'll start to build up heat. So I'll run around a little bit, a little bit of heat because I'm starting to run around. And then I'll shoot a, my lasers. You can see more heat. Once that gauge reach, reaches 100, I'll shut down. When you're shut down, you can't move. You can't do anything but sit there. Try not to shut down unless you're desperate. If you're about to die and you're going to alpha the guy in the face and hope to take him out before you go out, you're probably fine. But be aware that heat and shutting down is, makes you extremely vulnerable. So be aware that once that reaches 100, you'll have to shut down. Your mech will be out of action until it gets back to 100 because what it'll do is it'll fill up to 100 you'll shut down. Anything that's overflow over 100% will cause you to shut down longer and if it's 120% I believe, I'm not 100% sure on that, you'll start to actually take damage to your internal structure on your center torso so careful about that heat, don't overheat. But that's your indicator and as I showed you at the beginning of the video you'll get a warning if you're starting to get hot. Alrighty, let's go to the other side of the battle grid and that bar that's all the way filled with that orange line is my jump jets. So as I jump I'll start to consume that. At 25%. Once the bar is empty, you're out of jump jets, your mech falls. I wanted to talk about this in tandem with something that's up by the compass. You see it says zero meters per second there. That's how fast you're falling. So I'll jump. At 25%. And now I fell and I ended up at 41 meters per second when I fell. Uh, that's important for two reasons. If you reach certain thresholds when you're falling, depending on your mech type, and they do tweak this number occasionally, so I'm not going to list it here, but if you're curious as to what the exact number is for your mech, go out to the forums and look for falling damage. It'll, they have all kinds of charts out there on the forums that will tell you this. But uh, currently right now for light mechs, I believe it's 45 meters per second if you're falling. So there I hit 47 meters per second when I landed. And as you can see, I took a little bit of damage to my legs. So keep an eye on that if you're jumping around and falling or stepping off something. It may take damage to your legs. So be aware of that. So that, it, that meters per second up by the compass is four is to let you know how fast you're falling. So careful with how fast you fall. Um, something that's very important to note about the jump jet bar is when you hit 25%, Betty will tell you. But right when you hit 25%. By the time she's done saying it, you're probably out of jump jets. So uh, watch my bar as I jump again, and listen for when she starts talking. Fuel at 
See, I ran out of fuel before she even finished saying that. So uh, relying on Betty to tell you when you're almost out of gas is a bad idea because you'll start to, uh, you'll probably be out by the time she talks to you. Uh, so keep an eye on that when you're jumping. What you want to do is jump to get to where you want and still have some fuel left. So let's say I want to jump over this hill here. What I want to do is get enough jump to get over it and then have enough to cushion my landing. How, how it works is as you fire those jets, you'll start to be pushed up, and you'll continue to be pushed up until you stop firing the jets, and then you'll start to fall. If you started to fall and you fire your jump jets, they won't push you up anymore, they'll just cushion your fall. So I'll jump over this hill and show you that. Fuel at 25%. So by being careful with my use of jump jets there, it prevented me from taking leg damage by jumping all the way up and then falling all the way down. So keep that in mind, that's how those jump jets work and how that bar works. And right next to that is your speed in kilometers per hour. So as you press the W key or whatever you have it bound to, that'll start to ramp up. And it'll tell you your current movement speed. Nothing real spectacular here. I'm going 152.8 kph. And then as I start pressing the S key, it'll slow down. Back to zero, and then of course you can go in reverse. And that's your speed. Nothing real fancy there. Just tells you how fast you're going. And then on right next to that, on the bottom left hand side there, is a readout of my armor and my uh, internal structure. So on the very left hand part you can see that I have these yellow legs and damaged my leg armor by jumping too high. And then all my other sections, my arms, my side torsos, my center torso, and my head. Now the uh, other portion of that on the very right is your back arm. So uh, as you start to take damage to your armor, you'll see that that outline gets damaged. It'll start to uh, turn colors until it turns very dark red, and then you'll start to get on the internal structure. What I'll do to show you that is target a mech. New target acquired. As you target a mech up there on the right hand corner, you'll see the exact same kind of readout. It tells you what weapons he has. And then shows you his armor paper doll just like yours on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot him in the leg. So, pretty dark red. That means there's a lot of armor damage there. So if I hit him again, I'm going to strip it off. There you go. Now once that outline goes away and the, the uh, internal part of it there starts to fill with the color, that's how badly you damage their internal structure in that location. So as you can see, his leg is now yellow, so he's starting to take some damage. So if I hit him again, nice dark red. His leg is about ready to fall off. So if I shoot him one more time, his leg's going to pop off. His leg's gone. This is the exact same thing that will happen with your paper doll. Uh, so keep an eye on that. And that's how that works with either shooting somebody or on your paper doll. Let you know how badly damaged you are. And then let's talk about the other stuff that can happen to your HUD. We've talked about how ECM can make it fizzle. If you shut down, it goes away. Everything turns kind of reddish, and it just says system shut down. So uh, stay away from that screen. You don't want to see that. Some things that can change your HUD are the vision modes. So if I hit N, I'll go into night vision, and it'll be really bright. But we'll hit that. And you'll see there at the very bottom... Right above my armor diagram there, it says night. That's when we know that I'm in night vision. So if I turn that off, back to normal, I'll hit H, thermal. Thermal changes the uh, way the map looks again. Shows me how hot things are. And of course it says therm on the bottom there. So that's what's different about that. Oh, I almost forgot about the elevation indicator. To the uh, left of my target reticule, you see those two lines? When they're even, that means your mech's looking straight ahead. You're even with the plane of the uh, horizon. So as you look up, see how the, the bars move away from each other? That'll uh, give you an indicator of how far off of uh, the horizon you are. Almost forgot about him. You don't use him a lot. so And he's on the left and the right hand side there, so you can tell how uh, how far up you're looking or how far down your torso is pointed there. So that tells you your pitch of your 
torso there. Almost forgot about him. And then the final thing that can happen to your HUD is if you go to third person view. So let's do that. So now I'm in third person view. You can see I've lost a ton of my HUD. I don't have my lance indicator. I don't have my mini map. A lot of things missing. Um, something else that happens is as I showed you earlier, I can move my arm separate from my torso. Can't, I can't do that anymore. Um, there's also some kind of weirdness with the, uh, the target. You can see how it snaps around. It's trying to help you out by getting what's closest to you. So you can actually get in some pretty weird spots. If I get him on the hill right, I can, I can jump around quite a bit. See, it's, and it, it's really hard to put a shot where you want it when you're doing this too. So I'm sure I can hit him with the light. Got him with the light. New target acquired. Him. Still messed up from my artillery strike, but yeah, very, very hard to aim. So yeah, you can see it's jumping all over. I didn't uh, oof, wanted to hit him in the uh, right leg, and it jumped over to his left leg for me there. So it tries to it tries to guess where you want to hit. You can see that thing just bouncing all over. So yeah, you can see I started out shooting his uh, right leg. As I move closer to him, it bounced up to his torso and then down to his left leg. And see my laser fire just spread all over him. Did blow off that right leg though. But very, uh, very un uh, unpleasant to play with. I don't know how uh, people manage this. The, they added it to uh, help people understand where their torsos versus where their leg was pointed. And that's it's pretty pretty easy to tell from here. I can tell, definitely tell where my legs are going and where my torso is going, but. Extremely difficult to play, in my opinion. Now, uh, don't take that as an admonition if you'd like to play in this mode and it works for you. Feel free to do so. I would never tell somebody that, hey, if something's working for you and you like it, don't do it. I would never say that. I just personally find this to be not only disorienting, but very, very hard to use. Um, if you've noticed, uh, as I, uh, I'm going to go back to it. First person of you here to talk about this last little part that I, uh, I missed, and if you want more information about this, please check out my weapons tutorial. But what we've got here is you can see uh, my medium lasers, SRM4s, are, are all green. That has to do with the range. You can see there's that number on the side there, 297. My medium lasers were the best at ranges inside 297 meters. I pointed at that boat there, and right to the right of the target, you can see it says 217 meters. That's how far away it is. So as you, uh, move around, and if I'm pointing at the sky, it's infinity away, but uh, my lasers don't reach to infinity. Let's uh, actually point to something. So, point to the top of that hill, and that's a click and a half out there. You can see they're black. They don't work anymore. If you, but as I said, if you want more information about how those uh, weapons work, check out those tutorials. That's a, that's a whole thing of its own. But uh, let's spend a look at all the stuff in the HUD that I think is important. If I've missed something, please let me know. I would be more happy to... Uh, update this video uh, or perhaps even redo it if there's a bunch of stuff I missed but I hope this has taught you something I hope it helps you out I hope it teaches you some things about the HUD you may not have known um, actually one more thing before I sign off if you are getting hit by enemy fire around the very corners of your screen you'll actually see red and that's indicating where you're getting hit that's another one that's vitally important so let's say I'm gonna go fight this catapult if he were to shoot me right now, right above the timer, I would see a red line. Let's say he's shooting me with a laser that has uh, some duration on it, and I turned, that line would actually start at the timer, and the way I turned, what it would do is go across the right of my screen. Keep an eye on that when you're getting hit. I have a lot of good success of, let's say this catapult is fighting somebody, and I've snuck up on him, and he doesn't know I'm here because he's busy with the guy in front of him. And I start shooting him in the back. If he's not paying attention, he won't notice that red line across the bottom of his screen, not know he's getting hit in the back, get poured out. And I've actually uh, um, seen some players get frustrated because I've noticed they're getting hit with LRMs. They stink up behind them. They're busy trying to get out of the way of the LRMs. And I'm hitting them in the back, and they'll, they'll start yelling about how the LRMs are hitting them in the back. Oh, it's not what's hitting me in the back. It's me. So keep an eye on that uh, indicator. It'll tell you where the weapon fire is coming from. did want to mention that one. That one's really important. I use it so much that I... I'll kind of forget that it's there because it's just second nature to use it. Oh, and one last thing about the HUD that's kind of going away. If you're firing your missiles, and if you want to know more about this, please check out my missile tutorial. I'll go through it in a lot of detail there. If you're firing your missiles and you're noticing a slight delay, look around your cockpit. 
for a little red light. What that is, is your mech has weapon doors. Hit the question mark key to open them up and you can get rid of that delay. But uh, as I said, check out my missile tutorial. I'll talk about it quite a bit in there and show you how to use those more effectively as well. But I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If there's something I've missed, uh, let me know. If you have some questions, please let me know. If there's a tutorial you'd like to see, go ahead and leave me a note in the comments. I would be more than happy to make one. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to my channel. As I said, I hope this helps you out. And if, if I, I'd like you to have great luck on the battlefield, and I hope to see you there. Thanks a lot.